Um, so, uh, like I say, Leslie kind of kind of got told this at the last minute to to come and, and be here and talk about what HEB was going to do. That Justin Noakes uh, couldn't be here. For those of you just coming in, there was actually uh, um, HEB facility was a central market that actually got directly hit by the um, tornadoes in Dallas. So unfortunately, he got called away. And so Leslie is a senior director of the public affairs. Um, She's responsible for coordinating the company's uh, community and public relations efforts uh, in the region and statewide, G statewide strategic programming responsibilities. She holds a BA from Baylor, is getting her MBA from the University of Dallas. Uh, she's also a graduate of the leadership here in Austin, class of 2006. And aside from uh, um, all of that stuff, she enjoys spending time. I mean, she lives here in Austin with her husband and her and her two daughters. So uh, let's please welcome Leslie. All right. Well, good morning, everyone. Howdy. I like it. Um, so yes, I'm Leslie Sweet. I am not Justin, Justine, anything like that. Um, but I am a part of HEB's disaster response team. So I've been with HEB for 15 years. I've engaged in well over 15 disaster responses on behalf of HEB. Um, it's been one of the most powerful impacts in my life is to be able to direct the resources of HEB to change the lives of people in need. That's a core philosophy of HEB. Um, and it's an incredible experience to be a part of what our team can do during times of need. So um, I'll show you why Justin is not here in just a second. Um, but he's super bummed to miss it because um, he is our Director of Emergency Response for HEB. That's his 365-day job. Uh, we both wanted to say thank you for the work of all of you in the room. That informs us to be better, smarter, faster, and more efficient when we're deploying in the case of Harvey, upwards of $350 million of assets into the field. So on behalf of us, thank you for the work that you do. Um, we need you so that those of us downstream um, can be more efficient with the resources that we're stewarding. Um, Justin's going to be really upset to miss later in the day. I saw there's a swift water rescue um, GIS panel. He's also the executive director of Texar Search and Rescue. Um, he's pulled thousands of people. Um, out during swift water rescues and leads that team as well. It's one of his personal passions. So this is why he's not here. Has anybody shopped our Central Market Preston Royal store? See a few hands up. It's, this is our baby. It's only seven years old. We don't open Central Market stores very often and we are devastated that we took a direct hit on this Sunday evening at nine, uh, nine o'clock, around 9.30. Um, thankfully, um, so it, it ripped the roof off in several different places. The internal guts of the store are torn all over the place and we lost 90% of our HVAC and our roof is severely compromised. So um, Justin is in Dallas today with our officer team making the decision if, um, if we need to raise the store or if the shell can be salvaged. Um, so again, his apologies that he's not here today. Um, but he does need to be leading that team. We also have hundreds of employees that need to be placed in other stores, potentially for up to a year while we go through this process. Um, but the good news is the touchdown hit us. Instead of 1,000 feet away, it could have impacted more residential homes with people at home at 9.30 at night. Thankfully, we were, about to, we were 30 minutes from closing. We had a skeleton crew on duty and had no physical... Um, bodily impact, so we're thankful for that. So fortunately, it's just a whole bunch of money that we're going to be out in a bunch of time and a bunch of customers that can't shop with us for a year. Um, and then today, this is our mobile kitchen that was rolling in last night. This vehicle can serve 2,500 meals an hour. Um, so there are families in Dallas that are, you know, counting on, counting their pennies every week of how they're going to um, provide for their families. So this mobile kitchen will be feeding three meals a day for at least three weeks to the people in that area that might need assistance. So um, that's how you get me, but I'm excited to be here. This is awesome. So in case you don't know who HEB is outside of just we sell groceries, um, we were started in 1905 in Kerrville, Texas. Does anybody know who founded HEB? 
Everybody, anybody say anybody other than Howard? It's a lady, a lady, the power of a, of a woman with young children and her back against the wall. This is uh, Florence Butt. In 1905, her husband was a pharmacist. They were living in Tennessee. He contracted tuberculosis from a patient. She now had three young children, ailing husband, and the only cure at the time was move him to a drier, saltier climate. So she moves the family down to Kerrville, Texas, um, Work selling A and P tea for a year, saves up sixty bucks, and rents a two-story home in downtown Kerrville. Puts her ailing husband and her children upstairs, and starts a little grocery store downstairs. Um, she meeked out an eager income for her family. Taught her three young boys. They may not have much, but they always have enough to share. And whatever she knew would go bad at the end of the day, she would put in a little red wagon that we still have today in the company. And she would ask her young sons to drag it down to the banks of the Guadalupe River and give it to the hungry and homeless there. So that was the origination of HEB's philosophy that we should and can be giving back in meaningful ways to the people we serve. Um, her son served in World War I, um, came back. You know, He had an entrepreneurial spirit, thought he could continue what his mom started and open an HEB immediately and be successful. To the contrary, he lost three stores to bankruptcy before his um, store in Del Rio in 19, 1926 was successful. So that was the first successful second store. Three went bankrupt. Um, and as you can see from the timeline, we continue to grow our roots in South Texas. We're predominantly a South Texas retailer. And you can see from the map over here how vulnerable we are in our positioning against the mighty Gulf Coast. So we have lots of vulnerability from our Gulf Coast. Um, it's great, we love it, we love Houston, we love Corpus, we love Brownsville, all those stores, but it does mean that when hurricanes come or um, tropical storms come, HEB is highly interested to know the outcome. Let's see, uh, so today we have 347 stores in the US, 60 stores in Mexico, it made sense, they're our large trade partner, we're buying a ton of produce and other items from Mexico. So one of the Butt family members, Howard Butt III, went down and started an operation um, in the early, uh, I think, 1993 in Mexico, and we have 60 stores there. We're the 12th largest private company in America. We're the largest private employer in the state of Texas. Um, we have $27 billion in annual sales, over 112,000 employees, which we call partners at HEB. And in 2019, we received, uh, we just received from Indeed again three days ago that our employees voted us the retailer um, of the year. We're excited about that. And a big piece of that is three years ago, the Butt family who still owns and operates HEB um, bequeathed all of our employees with over a year of tenure to be stock owners at HEB. So you are looking at an owner of HEB there are cashiers that are owners at HEB. There are janitors that are owners at HEB. And it makes for a pretty powerful culture and people that want to work hard every day so that they can care for their families and participate in ownership benefits. This is a little bit of our um, strategic emergency preparedness program at HEB. These are all um, the components that we're looking at is how do we keep our business up? We are um, not a luxury business. People need their pharmacies. They need their diapers. They need feminine care. They need food. They need water. Um, they need all the things that we sell. So we need to keep our stores um, running. We look at catastrophic incident management. That's what Justin's doing today with our Central Market Preston Royal store. Um, we're an emergency preparedness liaison. Cities need us. Our state needs us. So we fulfill that role in, in offering our resources up to them. Um, we run an, an emergency operations center out of San Antonio. And of course, we have um, emergency assets, and I'll show you our disaster vehicles here in a minute. Our key priorities are, of course, partner safety. That's our employees. Um, our, store, our commitment to our communities is that we're going to close at the last moment possible that still upholds our commitment to employee safety, and we're going to be the first to open. So we're not taking a breath while the storm is coming in. We are working 365 days a year to be the first to come back and give our customers what they need after they've sheltered in place for several days. Um, we're gonna make sure we have the safe and right product and um, of course, you're gonna count on HEB for community support. 
We love vehicles, so forgive the, the show pony photo of vehicles, but that's a huge heartbeat of HEB is our transportation team. We have um, 19 vehicles committed to disaster relief and disaster response. Um, this is um, our mobile pharmacy right here that can dispense um, meds with a satellite uplink, and we're allowed um, to dis dispense meds without a prescription during um, dedicated or declared disaster times. We have um, water tankers, um, a bunkhouse, so we can, we can sleep 19 of our own people. Um, they also have a bathhouse associated with that. We've, we've learned it's not fun during Katrina and Rita to not have a shower for a week and a half, not have um, a place to use the facilities. So our team is well supported. And this is what our DRU, DRU looks like when it's deployed. And so we can serve if we have, we have three mobile kitchens. If they're all together, we can serve upwards of 8,000 meals an hour. Our large kitchen can serve 3,500 meals an hour. And if any of you volunteer with us at our uh, holiday free dinners that we provide to the community, the HEB Feast of Sharing dinners, these vehicles are in the back of the community centers making those meals for us, the hot turkey meals, the hot ham meals, and you're always welcome to ask for a tour of them. And then our goal is not just to slop out emergency food. Our goal is to use the power of uh, community and sitting around a table um, with chef-designed meals to restore dignity and build resiliency for these customers is they're going to have some heavy-duty lifting in their own personal lives for the, for the weeks to come. So um, our team is coached. We get volunteers from all over HEB land that come in. And for example, today we're starting meal service at Central Market Preston Royal. Um, those volunteers will be coached that we are to serve our guests as they come up. We're to try to encourage them, smile, um, serve them as if they're in a restaurant, if at all possible, and give them the best meal that we can serve in the conditions that we're in. So Harvey is unfortunately one of the worst test cases we've ever experienced. I'm sure many of you, um, all of you are aware of the timeline. But this is walking through a little bit that as we're getting red reports, as we're watching the work of all of you in the field, HEB is moving resources five days out, three days out, two days out, one day out. We are moving hundreds of trailers of product strategically placed to be out of harm's way with the best data reports that we can get and the fastest to get in once we have that opportunity. And we're also training and lining up our employees to where they might be needed to come in. So we're creating lists of uh, personnel to support disaster response as well as um, preparing our uh, physical assets in the fastest location to come in. This is our emergency operations center. Uh, this is in San Antonio at one of the facilities, the admin facilities we operate. It has all the major departments that are most impacted. So I'm on the public affairs team. We're largely the communicators to our public. So we need to tell them where we're feeding, when we're feeding, what stores open, what stores closed. Um, encourage people to follow um, the advice of local authorities and get out of town and then deal with them later if they choose to stay. Um, it's operated around the clock until we're at least a week through the episode. And we also have regional command centers that we can operate. And I wanted to point out um, that far right gentleman is the owner of HEB and he sits in this emergency command center with us for days on end. So the Butt family is not a, a passive team of operators. They are very active operators in the decisions made at HEB. And in fact, um, I was new. I'm trying to remember my first disaster response. And I made the mistake. Maybe it was the Granberry tornadoes. Maybe it was West. I can't remember the West explosion. But I made this mistake to think that I had three hours to think about how to direct our region in response to either West or Granberry, I can't recall, forgive me. And I made the mistake to think I had three hours to get a plan together. Oh no, I had a call within 45 minutes and Charles Buck called me on my cell phone and said, Les Leslie, please tell me how my people are helping. How are you helping this community? And so I learned pretty quickly that the clock starts immediately and HEB resources better be on the road immediately because that's the expectation of our ownership, is that we are not to sit 
on the warehouses of food and water and with having 112,000 people and not be helping. I mean, there's no excuse for that. We have highly trained people. We have one of the largest fleets in Texas, and we have the ability to move quickly, and we should be. So um, back to Harvey coming in. Again, remember our footprint. We have stores all over the Gulf Coast, San Antonio, Houston. Um, we are in the direct impact of Harvey as it comes in. We had 36 stores closed, um, as well as many of our manufacturing plants. So we make a lot of the food that we sell. So at one time, we have three bakeries, Corpus Christi, San Antonio, and Houston. At one time, for safety reasons, we evacuated the Houston Bakery and the Corpus Christi Bakery, and we had all of HEB land, those 247 stores, operating out of one bakery out of San Antonio. So not ideal conditions, but we asked those employees to work 24 hours a day and, and work as fast as they could, and they were happy to step up to the charge. Um, Rockport Refugio runs this pass. Eagleside took heavy damage and were all closed. And we had over 150 of our own employees lose their homes or um, experience severe damage. So of course, we fired up our mobile kitchens. They're already on standby anyways. The staff is ready to go, getting their last bit of sleep before they're deployed. We send support teams from each region. So what, if Houston's impacted, Central Texas in my region with 22,000 employees is sending uh, 500 employees a day to go help Houston. So we're helping clean out our stores, muck those out, and get those ready to go, as well as running the mobile kitchen, giving away free ice, giving away free water, and helping the community support. So we've sent, um, for Harvey alone, we sent over 6,000 employees from other regions to go help our impacted regions along the coast. And there's another photo of our DR, DRU with our water tanker shower facilities. We, act, we also carry a diesel trailer, as, as you can imagine. Um, being able to move our DRU, DRU is really important because local authorities, as the storm moves, the population is here, and then they need us to move 50 miles away and serve hot meals to other folks. Now so here's an example of uh, my pier in the Gulf Coast, and this is a mobile feeding site. Hi everyone, I'm Regina Garcia here in the mighty Gulf Coast region, Public Affairs Senior Manager. I'm here with Clay. Hi, how Hi. are you? And we've been serving and getting ready to serve our customers all day long. We've had dinner now going on here for the last hour, and we have had about a thousand of our customers come by. And Clay, you're, we're going to be here again tomorrow, aren't we? Absolutely. We're here with the Disaster Response Unit uh, for HEB. We're providing a mobile pharmacy, business center, hot meals, free water, free ice. We'll start again tomorrow at 8 a.m. and run till 6 p.m. All right, thank you so much. And those are the cheers of helping our customers. Thanks a bunch, everyone. See you tomorrow. So that's Clay on Justin's team. Um, and this is the minimum that we can do for communities is they, they still don't have power, they don't have potable water, um, and they could really use a hot meal in their neighborhood. So we set up where we can have access to the most amount of people. So Harvey would not go away, as we all know. Um, so we had six days of rain. We had a record uh, 53 inches of rainfall in the Houston area. Houston physically sank for an inch as a result of the weight of the water. So major impacts to our roadways. And September 1st, at the peak of flooding, a third of Houston was underwater. And 39,000 Houstonites were forced to evacuate their homes. So we have 89 stores in Houston. So we were significantly impacted as were the people that we serve, as were our employees that staff our stores. Here is, um, this is a brand new store, our Kingwood store. This is our, uh, what we call, call our top store leader, grabbed a boat and boated over to go see his store that was open less than a year. So this is a brand new HEB store that he's driving up to for the first time. Apologize for the terrible videography.
special impacts for both us, for these babies that we call stores, that we put our, um, so much heart and soul into, as well as the impact on our customers. So that's our Kingwood store, less than a year old, took on 10 feet of water, total loss. This was, Harvey was the largest business disruption we've had at that time in our 112 years of serving Texas. Um, at one given time, we had over 120 facilities closed in the greater Houston area. So every single one of our Houston stores, as well as Beaumont, Port Arthur, every store around that area. So imagine, we're, we're a fresh retailer. So when you close an HEB store and you lose power, think about all the cleanup that has to happen to get all that product out and the strain on our distribution center to get all the new fresh chicken back in, all the new produce back in, all the new milk. I mean, that's got to be produced at our dairy plant, at our ice cream plants, at our meat plant. All of that's got to turn up hyper fast to get to replenish losing that many facilities all at one given time, losing a ton of power, losing all that product. Um, we lost three stores, permanently damaged, had to rebuild them, and over 2,000 of our own employees' homes were damaged. Um, you know, we're, as I said, we're really proud of our fleet. We have one of the largest fleets in um, Texas, so that means we can get resources to people quickly, and we have lots of dedicated drivers. And we have um, great safety measures. So our, we have lots of 2 million safe mile drivers, 5 million safe mile drivers. So drivers that are experts at getting product safely and quickly to where it needs to go. Um, so we were asked, uh, City of Beaumont lost all water. Um, and so we were asked to come help do what we could there. And so here's our Vice President of Transportation driving in. Hey, everybody. This is Juan Carlos Rook, your Senior Vice President of Supply Chain and Logistics, coming to you from uh, Westbound State Highway 90. I'm here with Ed Toy, 23-year veteran driver. Handle is Fleetwood. So we're on our way after a long day, having delivered a convoy of 14 tractor trailers down here in Beaumont early this morning and delivering much needed water to the community down here. Real proud of our warehouse and transportation teams came together this morning to make this mission happen. Overall, I couldn't be more proud of this entire company, how we've come together to mobilize all parts of this company to help our communities in need. HEB taking care of Texas, Texans, and Texans taking care of Texans. I'm gonna try to get you a picture of the convoy. Please disregard the really bad camera work. appreciate everything everyone's doing out there. We'll make sure we get back safe so we can come back tomorrow for another round. Fleetwood is out. Um, do I have any veterans in the room? Thank you for your service. Um, Juan Carlos is an Army vet, and we find that our veteran population does some incredible work for us on logistics management, so I wanted to give you a shout out and um, thank our team. They're, they're full of some amazing American heroes and they do great work for us. So we dropped 10 water trailers for the city of Beaumont um, so they could source their own water and refillable bottles and then we dropped 14 trailers of PET uh, ready to drink water. So League City, some of our stores had to close before everybody could evacuate. So six of our, seven of our employees were stuck overnight in a store, couldn't get out. They started sheltering community members that also couldn't get out. And then Search and Rescue started using our store as a base of operations to safely extract people from, um, from the water and bring them to our store. So uh, for Harvey alone, we served over 50,000 meals across the Gulf Coast, all the way from um, Corpus Christi up to Houston. Uh, we handed out 150,000 cases of water, 70, 75,000 um, bags of ice, and 4,000 bags of cat and dog food. So what we learned with Rita um, is that if we don't take care of animals, people will not leave. So now, um, I would say 10 years ago, caring for animals was not a part of HEB's disaster response plan. It absolutely is now. So our pet buyer is now at our EOC in San Antonio, 
and we're distributing and managing animal care because that's how we get the people into the safe places they need to go. And if we ask them to leave their animals, um, they're not going to leave. So now we support um, bringing dog and cat food and pet carriers with our um, mobilization of resources. Um, we normally don't go outside of Texas. We're a Texas retailer in Mexico. Um, but of course, if we have neighbors um, in Florida and Puerto Rico, we're going to use our resources to help them as well. This is one of our terminals. So Publix This is going to be a tremendous, epic hurricane for this part of the coast. Uh, this is the command center where HEV has brought together all of its experts who are supporting everyone from our stores to our warehousing to our manufacturing plants as a result of Hurricane Harvey. During the notice that a hurricane was coming, we were selling about an 18 wheeler of uh, water every 90 minutes. We were actually partners and customers were helping us get them unloaded and sold. So the lines were definitely into the aisles. It was almost to the back of the store. And everyone's trying to get ready and be prepared. We have a category four hurricane now, 130 mile per hour winds coming in. Uh, that is gonna cause major structural damage. Oh my God. Now nightfall is bringing the chance of isolated pockets of rain and strong winds as Harvey's persistent remnants meander toward Houston. That's part of what we're trying to do is manage two catastrophic disasters. Right. One of them in Corpus Christi, yeah, now the rain event in Houston. Yeah. So we're Maybe the largest uh, storm in our lifetime here. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. absolutely. Largest, uh, largest yeah. flood event in right. Texas yeah. history. What's going on over here off Ritterman Road is that HEB is getting ready to launch an aid effort in a big way. We just pulled into Rockport a few minutes ago and got our truck situated and um, this is really as we were driving in the first time we saw just the visual devastation from Hurricane Harvey and um, I know it personally breaks my heart. The Texas coast holds a really special place in the hearts of all Texans. You know, with the hurricane hitting Harvey and the rains here in Houston, uh, last Tuesday the water started to come up. About one o'clock uh, decided to shut the store down. Uh, we started to see about two foot of water in the parking lot at that point and made the decision to get partners home, customers home safe. And so within an hour, we were taking on water. And uh, we continued to take on water until the ultimate outcome was about six and a half feet inside the store. I asked for Kingwood because I wanted to be here. And uh, it's been my baby. I've been excited about it from day one. Put forth an enormous amount of time into the store. and. Uh, and it's a little devastating, to be honest. But we'll come back. I know we will. So it's just going to take a little bit of time. But uh, walking in, seeing it every day, yeah, it's pretty tough. No doubt. Family helping family. That, to me, transcends anything that we have ever talked about at HEB. If you think about it in your own personal family, when uh, your family needs help, you drop everything and you go, right? That's what's happening today all throughout HEB. Because when you give up your time, you're giving up yourself. And that's what every single one of you is doing. So thank you from the bottom of my heart, because without you, one, we wouldn't be back in business, and two, there would not be such a thing called the spirit of HEB. So go forth, God bless and safe travels, uh, and know that the entire company is behind you, um, and you are representing the spirit of HEB with what you do. I'm 
here with Ed Toy, 23-year veteran driver. Handle is Fleetwood. So we're on our way after a long day, having delivered a convoy of 14 tractor trailers down here in Beaumont early this morning and delivering much needed water to the community down here. So HEB brought its mobile relief units from San Antonio that it's taken to other serious weather events, a much needed pharmacy, a business center for payments, cashing checks, and two mobile kitchens. They're equipped to prepare and give away up to 2,000 meals three times a day to residents and first responders. We're here at the NRG Center where we're getting ready for dinner at 6 p.m. with some of our amazing volunteers. Yay! Some of our partners from HEB and Me Tienda and Jovies, we're so excited to have them here. We've had our mobile kitchen in Victoria, uh, Aransas Pass, um, Rockport, all over, and really just want to do our part um, to support not only our first responders, but also the individuals who've been displaced that have shown incredible resilience and spirit. They're Houston strong and we're Texas strong. This is your Mobile Kitchen Disaster Relief Team and they're phenomenal. They've been doing such an amazing job this week. And so just wish them luck guys, send them some positive vibes. Uh, they're really energized by all the people that they're meeting out here uh, and the warm meals that they're getting to serve. It's bigger than just stocking shelves. It's bigger than just putting cereal on a shelf. It's going to provide hope to a community that is in major need of, of some hope, um, devastated by their losses, customers and partners both. So um, we, we want to be there to help. We want to be there to provide that hope. For Francisco Moncada, life is getting back to normal, but this is how he got to work the Sunday that Harvey's floods hit in force on foot walking in what would be chest high water in Friendswood. I thought it was going to take me something 10, 15 minutes. It was a half an hour after by the time I got out of the water. So then I sprinted the rest of the way to work. And then there's Corey Anderson, another stalker who showed up. And when he wasn't at the store, he was rescuing people from flooded homes. We got a little John boat and we picked people up from Dickinson and actually went and helped out. There was hundreds of people out there. To Mr. Charles Butt uh, and everybody at HEB, a donation of five million dollars is truly incredible. I mean, it is. There are no words to describe when people step to the plate like that. I do want to applaud uh, HEB here in the state of Texas. Uh, this is part of the reason why HEB is so great. Uh, doing this for our partners, taking care of our own as well as the community, is something that's uh, something that's something that's truly awesome. This is really nice. I really, I mean. To have all these people show up that, you know, just out of nowhere, basically, just to help. But that's kind of what HEB's like. You don't realize how important it is for people to help out. Thank you. Just a simple thank you. A big hug, a big high five, and just a heartfelt thank you. Thank you, partners, for making a huge positive difference in the lives of others. Thanks, partners, for everything that you've done with your help on Hurricane Harvey. Uh, you know, a sincere thank so that was our internal video to thank our thousands of HEB employees that worked 24 hours a day for weeks on end, um, that came out and volunteered with us. Um, so yeah, it's a big endeavor to do disaster response at HEB. We spend a lot of time planning in advance of, of an impact, and then of course uh, we're with you in our communities for weeks on end. Um, our customers have a great sense of humor. <laughs> we don't at all... Um, I think or aspire uh, or think that we're in any way um, more powerful than our state and federal um, leaders, but we do think it's pretty funny the way customers enjoy having a good time. Um, but this is Justin's contact information. He manages our statewide, federal, and local engagements um, with disaster response on behalf of HEB. We have um, decentralized leadership during times of disaster. So if it's in my region, I'm making calls on what I need. And it's Justin's role to sit at the 10,000 foot view of the company and look down and say, how do we manage resource allocations? So his job is to keep the company moving, get stores back up, as well as support community engagement and work with where each one of our trailers is across the state of Texas, which warehouse we're pulling from, 
which bakery plant is going to go on 24-hour production. Um, so he's really looking at resource allocation. And then he's the safeguard to make sure that we're not putting our employees in harm's way. So our employees are foaming at the bit to get in and help. And so it's Justin's job to work off of your data to make sure that we are in the clear um, and able to do that safely, because we're, we're um, primed and ready to go. So that's all that I have for you today. I'd love to answer any questions if anybody has them. And again, I really appreciate you letting us visit with you this morning. Thank you, Thank so you. so I, th I mean, you can just even just tell by looking at this stuff, it's the spirit of, of what goes on. And I think it's interesting because when Ju I saw Justin do a similar talk to this, Y'all are so modest about not actually saying, you do this on your own time, your own dime. Y'all don't get paid for it. This is what y'all do. Y'all don't say that, but that's what you guys do. And I think, uh, I, I always thought the state had like a big fund or something, and that at the end of it, HEB billed them, and that's how it was. Uh, it's not that. It's, this, is, this is, I just think that was incredible, and I think it's very moving. And again, in the spirit of what we're talking about, and a lot of you guys... Uh, when we have emergency scenarios, I think y'all do very, very similar things, so I know we can relate to that. So, does anybody have any questions for Leslie? Hold on, wait. Yeah, we're good. Are you ready? Thank you. I, I'm curious about your in-house GIS support. So we use emergency alert that's feeding us all kinds of information. And unfortunately, that's where Justin would be the expert on that. I'm, unfortunately, I'm not the expert on um, our data acquisition. Um, but that's, we're, con we're getting hourly updates. And then we have a whole suite of vendors that are engaged to report information to us. OK, I was just wondering, do you have any actual GIS people on staff? Mapping. We do, yeah. on our logistics side, uh, MWT. So they're looking at our drivers, they're looking at a whole suite of information from a traffic and safety perspective, and then um, a sophisticated rerouting situation. So imagine we're sending in 200 trucks a day into Houston and roadways are being opened and closed, and we're, we're trying to, to manage that as best we can. So that's, that's one. Um, one case, but we could always use more. For example, it would be great to know when we're sending, uh, we don't have GIS data, for example, when we're sending um, thousands of employees in a day. I'd love to know where they are, where they're moving, um, a little bit more information there, because we're responsible for those, those folks as well and the field conditions that they're in. So they're, they're doing it old school. They're calling in and telling us what they're seeing, um, which isn't ideal. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Oh. <laughs> oh, the box, yes. So my question is related to, to the last question. Um, what can we do as a GIS community in Texas to help support HEB in these times? Like, are there specific data needs that you guys have that maybe we can help um, assist with? Yeah, again, I think um, our, our business is fairly sophisticated from our traditional business of, um, of how we're deploying resources, um, our, our 18 wheelers that we have great information on. It's when we're in the middle of crisis response and all of a sudden we have, we're sending thousands of ants on the ground out in all kinds of ways. Um, that's where I think we can see even more enhanced management from the state. The challenge is it gets really messy because the county, we're trying to find one point of contact during a disaster. The state may be busy bringing in state resources. We have a county judge in Bastrop telling us where they want us and what field conditions are open and safe. We're getting different direction from a state director. and We're potentially getting different direction from a mayor. And it would be nice to reconcile all of that potentially from a data perspective versus an emotional response from, from county state leadership. Um, I think that would be the ideal state is if we had one set of data that we said this is, our, this is our safety protocol, if this says we're okay, we're going in, 
versus uh, it's pretty painful for us when we bring in our fleet, our caravan of 20 vehicles. Uh, we start setting up. It takes about six hours to pop up all of our vehicles, and then we immediately get the call to shut it down and move over here because the water's rising and, and we're moving. So I think just continuing to strengthen your engagement and build a platform that's the recognized source during times of crisis would be fantastic. Uh, thank you for your uh, presentation. I greatly appreciate it. Uh, why aren't there any HEB stores in far west Texas such as El Paso? <laughs> I know, I know, right? Why? Believe me, that's one of my number one calls is um, why can't I get a store in Del Valley, in El Paso? Um, we just answered the call for Lubbock, so we're building stores in Lubbock now, which has been a 30-year-odd request to build stores there. But we're privately held. So we're not funded by shareholders. We're not funded by Wall Street. We are funded by one family, trying to make sure that HEB is sustainable for the next century. So we move pretty slowly when it comes to capital expense. Um, and we keep a, a pretty large reserve of funding because um, the Butt family does not like laying off. They don't like mistakes that impact people. So you see us moving a little slowly than others. So. Okay, I'll put, I'll, I'll send that in, I'll send that in. Any other questions? So I do want to make a comment. Um, I did speak to a, just a, an employee in San Antonio when I was there at HEB, and I had already heard what uh, Justin had talked mm -hmm. about, and I had talked to him about, you know, does he ever go out and on these kinds of things, and he said yes. But the interesting thing he said is, is how much of a privilege it was mm -hmm. to do that. That's mm -hmm. what they think. You know, this isn't something that, you know, you have to coax people into doing. When it happens, they're just like, oh, me, me. You know, it's kind of one of those things. And I th think about that. I don't know if he was a teenage kid, but he probably was, mm -hmm. that left his home, waited in, a, you know, 30 minutes of just high water just to get to work. I don't know many kids that would necessarily do that. Um, but to have that obligation and that culture, I guess, is what you guys, maybe could you speak a little bit to yeah, the I culture? Yeah, I mean, we don't ask folks to walk through half an hour of high water to get to work yeah. um, or else or kayak to work or get a john boat to get to work but you know as as we joke i mean you drink the kool-aid at heb and to we're i mean our coo says we sell groceries so that we can improve the lives of texans so we're the the largest provider of food and funds to the food banks of texas uh, we provide a massive amount of support to public schools once you're inside HEB and you see the power of what selling groceries does for public education, disaster response, um, helping our one in four children in Central Texas that are food insecure, that don't know where their next meal's coming, when you get to show up and serve those kiddos um, a warm meal before they go home for the weekend and who knows if they have the nutrition they need, I mean, it's a powerful, life-changing experience. And that's why we work so hard. I mean, you. You watch an HEB person stock the shelves. I mean, they are humping it. Um, I have two kids, and I, I gladly um, ask my husband to cover the kids for a week, and I'll just be gone doing disaster response because it is a great privilege um, to go serve fragile populations that are exhausted. They might be sick. They might be off their meds. And to roll in um, with some amazing resources is such a great privilege and it's a privilege I didn't I didn't have to pay for the water tanker I didn't have to pay for all of that the butt family is is covering that bill but to be able to roll in um, and give people what they need and help the, somebody's grandma that they can't get to their grandma I mean if any of y'all have been through a disaster situation which I'm sure you have and you can't get a hold of your family members the anxiety level in which we roll in is high I mean high and so we offer them um, our satellite call phone calls. We offer them every bit of what they have. They're welcome to come in our bunkhouse. They're welcome to come get whatever they need because we're just trying to lower the level of anxiety until the state and everybody can come in with the massive resources. But our team is really just an early cheerleading team. Like, let's get you, mm -hmm. let's get you as safe as we can. Let's get you a phone call so that you know that grandma's okay and know that there's somebody looking out for her and we're gonna take care of her until we can hand her off um, to people that can really give her, helicopter her out. We, we use every bit of vehicular traffic transportation possible. So in Houston, we couldn't get to our 18-wheeler terminal, 
So we were flying in via helicopter all of our drivers to get them to open up the tournament because it was up on a hillside. Uh, there was water all around, but we wanted to be ready. First to open means you get your drivers in there, you get them cleaning up the facility, checking the trucks, reporting back on which trucks are flooded, which trucks are drivable. So as soon as the floodwaters were down low enough, we can drive our trucks in three feet and under, mm -hmm. we were moving because our team had already been flown in and they had two and a half days to get the facility and the trucks ready. Very, very good. And so our, our number one tenured people get, get first pick to, volu to volunteer to go in and serve. It's been very impressive. Yeah. Any, any last questions? Okay. Leslie, thank you so much. Yes, Let's sir. give her a big round of applause for stepping in. Thank you. Thank you for that. Thank you. I appreciate that.